Good morning. It is Monday, 8.01, and this is the Gold Fix with Vince Lancey. Those of you who are from on this side of the pond may and are under the age of 40 may not know what Gold Fix means. Sounds like manipulation. Uh, a little history of the term. Uh, one of the subscribers who joined two months ago said, why are you calling it the Gold Fix? Uh, that's a sign of manipulation. Well, that's the irony of it. Google is your friend. Uh, once upon a time, not too long ago in London, they had an AM gold fix and a PM gold fix. They actually fixed the price of gold legitimately like they did with LIBOR uh, for balance sheet reasons. Uh, you will, however, uh, not see, uh, if you don't see the irony uh, in the term gold fix uh, over the years versus what actually happened in the market, as well as in LIBOR, then you are a moron. Stop listening. Um, but if you are continuing to listen, uh, understand this. Uh, the lesson to take away from, uh, as an aside, uh, I've been involved in uh, background and expert work on manipulation cases. You will find most commodities, most markets that are prone to manipulation are prone to manipulation when there are windows of activity that are uh, used for pricing on a daily basis. Uh, examples where you'll find the most manipulation historically, not now, uh, historically I've been during the, during the fixes of metal prices, during LIBOR's fix, and during treasury auctions. And the reason for that is you don't have to manipulate a market all day long to get the price you want. You only have to manipulate it or uh, uh, coerce it where you want it to be for a short period of time. Uh, to quote a former uh, GSCI director, the guy who did the head trading there, uh, we don't manipulate markets. We manage them. You manipulate markets. And I said, why is there a difference? Uh, Semi-naively, he said, that's because you don't work for a corporation. I do, and I'm protected. Uh, that is a quote. He shall remain nameless. He's also unemployed now because uh, uh, that's what Goldman does. They let people go. Speaking of Goldman, uh, before we get into gold, uh, I was just given a Goldman report. Uh, it's a high-end retail report describing gold's return, titled Gold's Roles of the Portfolio Diversifier Resurfaces. I'll throw a paragraph or two in there. Uh, I didn't have time to put it in the report, uh, but I wanted to uh, uh, allude to it. It will be made available to um, subscribers and people in the chat room. Uh, you might be able to find it on social media. That is if Goldman doesn't come and arrest me for putting it out there. I get these from time to time. I got one from Citibank saying that they were front running their own uh, uh, well, they were they were just saying to their institutional investors, feel free to play on the fact that CTAs are short. Uh, our CTAs are the shortest they've ever been, and uh, uh, they're ripe to be uh, stopped out. Anyway, uh, I could do hours on uh, market manipulation and spoofing. Uh, in fact, the first article I wrote publicly was in 2007-2008 as a whistleblower uh, quietly on Zero Hedge called, uh, I didn't say whistleblower, second whistleblower comes forward on silver. This is during the Fibro thing. If you look back, you'll find it on their site of 2010. Uh, uh, it's basically the mechanics of how it went down and what I dealt with. Let's get to the markets uh, because I could speak for no particular reason about uh, markets all day long that are manipulated or managed. Okay, the dollar is slightly firmer. I'll call that mixed. Gold is slightly lower. Uh, silver is slightly lower. The only precious metal that seems to care at all, uh, 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 or that is bucking the trend, is palladium, which was up as much as one and a quarter percent this morning. It's now up a little bit under one percent. Uh, one may think, uh, as I've alluded to in the past, that palladium and copper are tied together as they're both very economic, uh, uh, but it doesn't seem to be the case right now. I've also referred to in the past as palladium being a leader in rallies, and it had been. Uh, I'm not so sure right now about that correlation. As you will hear, Larry, people like Larry, who trade like Larry, that intraday they're saying, this is highly correlated. I see this as an indicator. 10 minutes later, up, oh, the correlation's broken down. I don't care. People don't care about that. You'll hear me say the same things Larry says on a slightly longer time structure or term structure. Doesn't mean I don't look at it on a minute by minute basis, but, uh, 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 you know, I do look for regressions to the mean and correlations. Uh, 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 I don't change my correlations during the day or because I'm not as much of a gut trader as Larry is. In fact, I am more of a gut trader than Larry is. That's why I don't do it. Uh, I see relationships where none exist. 
And as a result, I need to be more disciplined about it. So, all right, the yuan is a little bit uh, higher. That means it's a little bit weaker against the U.S. dollar. That is important in context of what we have been talking about. Uh, the yen, slightly slightly to nowhere flat. The euro is slightly lower. There is a big expiration today, I think, uh, over one and a one and a half billion dollars uh, at one point one three spot five. There's also another one at one point one five uh, over one billion dollars. Uh, so uh, if we pin that strike, I'm sure that'll be really fun for gold. That would mean the euro will be do higher, uh, dollar will be lower, and gold would uh, be higher. If you're not keeping up to me because I speak too fast, I'm sorry. Uh, that's just the way it goes today. All right. Uh, Canadian dollars, I think uh, no apparent help. It's off the table today. Holiday of some sort, I'm not sure. Australia, um, nobody cares today. Uh, emerging markets are... Uh, Depending on where you're looking, a little weaker, a little stronger. Uh, Argentinian uh, uh, peso, uh, I think zero is can't, zero percent is still a percent, probably based on that market. All right, so let's go right to the post, so we can walk through this. All right, today's title, no particular place to go. That title is apropos, considering that number one, I have no volatility indicators that are near going off, except for one that is very unreliable. But I'll give it to you anyway. Number two, I suspect markets will be moving sideways uh, with possible intra-hour or intra-time period jerks as the uh, elections come in. And number three, uh, I've got nothing original to say. Uh, so here we go. Market overview. Markets are flat. Recoveries and equities have stalled for the moment. Major stock indices are mixed. Uh, currencies in a tight range against the U.S. dollar. And gold is offered lower at 1233 as of this writing. All right. So palladium was... Uh, up one and a quarter percent. Wrapping around the gold, the, the, the globe, listen to me. Um, trade cynicism. You can read this on your own, but the bottom line here is a lot of people were making much of what uh, President Xi would say uh, during, uh, uh, I don't know, some sort of a, some sort of a, a speech venue. Uh, and uh, what people took away from that, including Bloomberg, uh, was that uh, he wasn't, he was in disagreement with the president, Trump, and that really you shouldn't take anything that he said to be, uh, uh, you should fade what Trump's saying if you're listening to Xi, if you should fade what Xi's saying if you're listening to Trump. Uh, uh, Xi showed no signs of backing down is the concept. But I want to read between the lines, having looked at some of the speech, okay? Uh, the prospects of a resolution to the U.S.-Chinese trade resolution that posted his speech this morning. Okay. All right. What really happened? And, and this is, you know, this is beyond the headlines and beyond the, uh, yes, uh, Trump is trying to get out the base. Yes, he's going to promise a chicken in every pot. Yes, the trade wars are going to be resolved. Uh, the Chinese president will disagree with him. But what really happened to me is further uh, comments that implied that the weak yuan is done. Uh, Xi made it more clear that policy is leaning towards relieving trade tariff pressures on Chinese goods via tax breaks and not discouraging leverage. What does that mean? We're moving away from monetary policy to try and offset tariffs and moving towards domestic policy. They are copying the U.S. And what that means is they're going to lower taxes, give tax breaks, rescue, do whatever they have to do to keep their corporations from going under to stem the slide of their stock market. As the stock market goes lower, it causes a flight of capital, of offshore capital, and that just uh, makes the currency even weaker. Um, this fits with the backing off and debasing the yuan through monetary policy. Uh, that's Those are my words. Uh, uh, Chinese corporations will get relief. Citizens, not so much. What's new? All right, Europe. Uh, data showed a loss in momentum in the economic recovery, uh, which is interesting because that came a couple of days after they were talking so hawkish. And uh, uh, I'm no, uh, I'm not endorsing President Trump's rhetoric, but I am saying that yes, uh, the Fed does tend to heighten into, uh, uh, tend to strengthen into the top of the market uh, when they get it wrong. Uh, the usual Brexit news, non-news was around, centered on customs rules and implications of Ireland. We'll get into that. You can look into it. Uh, but for those of you across the pond that are listening, uh, you already get it. Basically. Uh, any good deal for, for London uh, 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 would cause, internationally, would cause domestic strife uh, with Ireland. So 
Lawyers and politicians continue to get paid. Nothing was done. U.S. midterm elections enter their final hours, campaigns, I should say. Markets expect a, a split Congress. This, you know, by markets, I mean you have to understand that you know whether it's right or wrong is not the point. Right now, the markets are discounting. They should be discounting a split Congress where Democrats gain control of the House and Republicans retain the Senate. This week, the U.S. Well, actually today, the U.S. reports PMI and ISM today at 9:45. Market. It's interesting how pub, a private company is now publishing data that's real relevant. Um, uh, market publishes U.S. services and purchases, purchasing manager as of October 10 a.m. The ISM manufacturing index is released. I don't have that number handy, but uh, it will be available, uh, I'm sure, at the 8.30 a.m. roadmap because not only do I participate, I listen. Um, okay, trading. VBS, that means the volatility-based system or more of a momentum system, is no particular help today with nothing on the radar except the 60 minute, which we view with caution and rarely play during the first hour. Nevertheless, it remains there. And if it remains there in the second hour, you might want to consider it. That doesn't mean you have to buy it if it goes above or so if it goes below, you could trade the range. But it is, the numbers come in on December futures at 1232 spot 76 and 1235 spot 20, which is extremely tight. Uh, and uh, in my opinion, as if you look at the chart, from uh, Friday, we had a breakout higher and a breakout lower, and the market ended up nowhere. Uh, you're prone to be chopped up uh, when I get signals that are this tight, first way, wrong way, second way, right way. But with the election coming up, you can have first way, wrong way, second way, wrong way as well. But you're giving up $3. That's the beauty of the system. Uh, I buy it above 1235.20. I get stopped out. I reverse below 1232.70. I get stopped that. I lose $5. I'm done. Hopefully, gold is not the only thing you're trading. But if it is, uh, keep that in mind that today is a day uh, where we could have a violently unchanged day. Uh, that's speaking about the system. Uh, just for the record, silver, same level, same time frame, 1478.90 and 1469.70, since it has been performing so well recently. All right. So the one hour is no apparent help. Uh, there is the uh, one month. Is this the one month? It should not be the one month. It should be one week. Right. All right. Let's go this way. All right. So we can all so we can all read a little bit better. All right. On the weekly, uh, I said a couple of days ago, 1260, 1275 are on the radar because this is a retracement. Uh, this is a negation of a momentum signal lower. And I'm just beginning to do a regression to the mean version of this model uh, uh, based on the fact that every time I was selling, Larry was buying. Every time I was buying, Larry was selling, I noticed. Uh, so uh, I look for a way to tweak it. And <clears throat> we do have one uh, that says a slow and orderly move to 1260, 1275 is in order. Uh, technically, if you look at this chart, uh, those two red uh, candles at the very end there, uh, those are bullish uh, in the sense that that's a bull flag pulling uh, a bull flag plus the low wick below. Uh, you know, I'm a fan of wicks. Um, let's move on to the next chart. The weekly doesn't give you anything definitive. All right. Technicals. We'll move right to uh, what our friend Michael Moore offers. All right. Uh, we're going to ignore the macro. Uh, you can read that if you're a subscriber and you can read the numbers as well. Uh, but we'll stay with the upside and the downside. Okay. Uh, again, these are opinions. Uh, he actually does trade on these, uh, but he has no conflict. All right. He's advised to get long above 1238.40 versus 1239.30. So he gives ranges frequently. Uh, I have 1235.20. So you can imagine how uh, if his numbers are right and my volatility numbers are wrong, you would trade my number. Uh, above 1235, and unless it gets above 1238, you would be very reticent uh, to be comfortable in it. If we break above 1243 and back below, look for profit taking to come in. We believe that is pretty obvious. We have a lot of wicks above there uh, in that area. We've made new highs and back off several times. I think the next time up, we won't back off or put it this way, we'll have a more significant break. Right. If we do go higher, look for possible exhaustion in 1266 to 1266.10 to 1268.80 area. The reason his numbers have decimals in weird places is because he is an energy guy. Um, I do get his energy report, but I'm not permitted to share that. Um, uh, I'll be speaking uh, with him about that some other time. On the downside, 1230.60, 1230.70, 1230.80, 1230.85, 1230.90, 1230.95, 1230.96, 1230.97, 1230.98, 1230.99, 1230.100, 1230.101, 1230.102, 1230.103,
uh, is a level to buy against. He has an up, upward sloping trend line there um, with a decent stop or approaching a decent stop below. All right. I'm, uh, I'm as a person who likes to trade breakouts uh, and who uh, is more comfortable trading breakouts or letting my gamma run, uh, I don't really see anything uh, compelling uh, in a risk reward on the system that I use. And that means we could move $50 either way. We could move $10 either way, but we won't catch it. Uh, you catch it for different reasons. So you should buy it for technical reasons. I do want to mention the stock market today. Uh, because, uh, other than the fact that it is important, because I think for the next couple of days, where gold goes, the stock market goes, or put it this way, where the stock market leads, gold will follow. And by that, I mean, uh, you could see for the next day or two, as elections approach, a weaker dollar uh, uh, re reassert itself, which would be bullish, which should be bullish for stocks, uh, uh, but hasn't been the last time, which would be buoyant for gold. Uh, so I think uh, if the dollar does nothing and gold goes high and stocks go higher, I think gold might go a little bit higher as well. The reason I bring up stocks is uh, this is the S S P uh, S P X. So this is the cash S and P. It doesn't trade 24 hours. If you trade, if you trade normally, you trade the E S. But if you look at gaps, they still matter during U S time. And we have a gap between 2680 ish and 2700. I think this is important, um, and I would be willing to bet that there's uh, that there's some construction or work that needs to be done, or some VWAP issues there, stuff that uh, Tracy looks at uh, 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 a team member uh, closely. I would say uh, some people will say to you, "In a gap, buy it uh, uh, with a stop below the gap." Some people will say, "In a gap." That's bearish if, if it gets if it, if it goes into the gap, and some people will say uh, 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 people will say whatever they want. Uh, what I say is, if it gets into the gap, watch it, see how it behaves. Maybe it fills the gap and then goes higher later. Maybe it fills the gap and continues lower. The point is, the gap is an area of supposed to be an area of repulsion or 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 not revulsion, repulsion, uh, and pay attention to that. I do want to share a little bit of the insight. Um, you're looking at uh we'll just put uh put the macro markets up today all right so there's your stock markets uh china's a little bit lower in the kai uh nowhere uh dax and FTSE dax and stocks are roughly the same uh uk is a little bit stronger uh the dow the nasdaq and the s&p are a little bit lower in reverse percentages the Dow is down the least, the NASDAQ is down a little bit more, and the S&P, or the ES, I should say, is actually up. Um, that's what we're looking at there. Okay. Uh, over the past month, quoting Goldman, over the past month, gold has rallied 4%, reaching its highest value since July. That's great, uh, but it's down probably 20% uh, before that. The rally coincided with the stock market itself and represents a return of fear related to it. No, in our view. No. Don't buy into that. That's not true. <laughs> uh, uh, but, but by all means, if everyone's buying into that, then trade around it short term, but that's not fundamentally true. Uh, gold is not, if gold goes up because people are selling stocks and the dollar's not moving, then those people are idiots. They should be, they will be hammered when they get out of their positions. But with U.S. growth still strong and rates still rising, how can gold continue acting effective hedge? Okay. So this is a clickbait first paragraph. Uh, we go through it and I will post this whole thing here. But basically, uh, the gold ETFs rebounded as the market sell-off led to return of fear. All right. They put fear in quotes because it's not really fear. It's a quote of fear. Uh, excuse my cynicism. Um, we find that fear is a currently far more important driver of gold investment demand than the opportunity cost of holding gold measured by short-term U.S. rates. Okay. Uh, I can't disagree with all that more. It's, it, 100%, I can't go higher than 100% on that. Uh, but uh, but then again, you know, they get paid a lot of money to tell that. Um, uh, uh, in about 15 minutes, but stay actually uh, after the AM report with uh, Michael and uh, Larry. He may be in transit. So uh, look forward to speaking with you then. Bottom line here is uh, if you're trading gold, um, 
I don't know if you're trading gold, you might want to be bearish. Why don't we go, go out with a comment on where gold is right now? Okay, that's the monthly. That's no apparent help. All right, one hour. All right. Um, 28, 29.30. Yeah, uh, if you're trading the first hour, and I'm not, uh, you would be short gold at 12.30. Let's see, 12, 30 and a half, which puts us at about 12, 32, 70. You would be short below that uh, as of the end of last hour. I'm going to wait for the end of this hour. Would I sell a bounce? No. Uh, uh, would I sell the market if it came in here uh, in the next hour? Yes, my stop would be there, which would be, this is this is spot gold. So it's 12.28, add $2, it's 12.30. So I would be short right here if you want to be aggressive with a stop at 12.32.20. I will not be short as I'll be on the air. And uh, I don't like to shorten the first hour anyway. Uh, that said, um, safer to be short than to be long right now. $2 stop's not going to hurt you. Have a great day. This is Vince, and uh, thanks for joining.